have been difficult for many people. You're wondering how you will be able to work from home, how you will pay your bills after losing your job. It might be difficult to stay with a good morale. It's normal to be frustrated. But if you went through a difficult time, ask for help, and there's some people who can help you. And if you think that a friend or a member of your family needs help, just give him a phone call or give her a phone call and tell him or tell her that you're there to listen. We're going through tough times and we go through this together and help is coming. This evening, I'll be chairing a first minister's meeting with the premiers. We're going to talk about how to continue working together to keep people safe and supported. Over the last few weeks, in the face of an unprecedented challenge, we've seen all levels of government cooperating on a response. And going forward, that collaboration will become even more important. We will be there to support the provinces and territories with whatever they need. This includes sending personal protective equipment and other supports for the healthcare system. Last night, we received a shipment of over a million masks to a Hamilton warehouse. I know that people there have been working overnight to validate these supplies. This is in addition to the 10 million masks that have come in over the last days and are being distributed to the provinces and territories as quickly as possible. And this Team Canada effort goes beyond government. About two weeks ago, we launched Canada's plan to mobilize industry to fight COVID-19. Since then, we've spoken to almost 3,000 companies, helping us secure millions of pieces of vital equipment. And I want to share a quintessentially Canadian example of this collaboration. Our government has ordered hundreds of thousands of face shields from Bauer, the people who make hockey gear. They're creating shields to protect nurses and doctors against COVID-19. This is exactly the kind of innovative, collaborative thinking we need right now. And I know we're going to see more of it in the coming days. Ce soir, Tonight, the premiers and myself will discuss about the, the coordination of our efforts and the sharing of data. We need to work together to identify what our communities need throughout the country. Provinces have made considerable progress in order to analyze in a more quick fashion the tests. And now experts have new data on which they need to look at. tonight, the premiers and I will also discuss our continued coordination and sharing of data and modeling. We need to work together to know what's needed, where and when, for communities right across the country. Provinces have been making significant progress on testing backlogs, which is giving experts important data to analyze. And we're constantly getting and validating more data. That means we can share more information with you. You can go to canada.ca slash coronavirus for the latest information about cases, growth, and spread. But I know a lot of people are still wondering when this will get better or how much, how much worse it might become. You want to see the numbers and the predictions. You want to wake up in the morning and look online for the latest, more credible data you can find. You want to plan. You want to prepare for the worst. You want to know what to be hopeful about. I know. And we'll have more information, keep in coming to you with it soon. But the biggest variable in shaping these projections is you and your behavior. You must listen to the world-class doctors who are already sharing the best available information and advice. Ignoring them puts lives at risk. It's up to you to do the right thing. While many of you are staying home and limiting trips to the grocery store, too many still aren't. What the experts are telling us is that we must do everything we can today and tomorrow to set us on the right path for next week and next month. It takes time for the effects of our actions to be felt. So if we don't want our hospitals to be overwhelmed, <clears throat> so if we don't want our hospitals to be overwhelmed in the coming weeks, we need to make the right choices and we need to make them now. 
Our public health care system is strong, and our health care professionals are remarkable, but they're facing a threat. If every single one of us steps up right now, we can help them. If you listen to doctors, if you stay home, if you stay away from other people, we won't overwhelm our hospitals. We will protect our doctors and nurses. We will protect our friends and neighbors. It's going to take distancing and time to flatten the curve. But that's how we'll get through this. So let's save lives together by staying apart. We'll keep working around the clock to get you the help you need to do just that. To protect your job, to protect your company or your salary, we've launched an economic plan with three aspects to help you until things go better. With the emergency salary subsidy, we're, we're helping your employer to keep you. With the new guaranteed loan for companies of all size, we help business owners to get credit, to get through these tough times. And with the Canadian emergency benefit, we are helping you until things get back to normal if you lost your job or your paycheck. I want you to know that we're giving this fight everything we've got. Just yesterday, we announced the biggest economic measures in our lifetime. Governments of all orders are organizing the most significant civic mobilization since World War II. Doctors and nurses, truckers and air cargo operators are scaling up operations to levels we've never seen before in our history. But here's the truth. None of that will be enough without your help. The notion of serving our country changes from one generation to another. Your grandfather possibly served his country by going abroad for a war. Your mother might have fought for more equality. Now it's your turn, your turn to contribute to the effort. You can serve your country by staying at home and following the rules. I know it might seem simple, but it's the only way to get through these times. Everybody needs to do his or her part. Everybody needs to sacrifice his or her routine in order for life to get back to normal one day. I know we can and we will do it together. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Premier ministre. On va commencer par la période de questions par téléphone. Modérateur, le plancher est à vous. Merci. Thank you. Merci. Première question, Nina Dib, La Presse canadienne, à vous. Oui, bonjour, M. Trudeau. Euh, Mr. Trudeau, uh, I'd like to discuss about the equipment, medical equipment and the supply chain. We hear all kinds of story about uh, equipment being uh, taken and, and taking the wrong path. Have you talked about to the um, American administration for all the equipment, medical equipment sent to Canada is sent to Canada and not going to American interests that are now at over 200,000 cases. I saw with big preoccupation this report that was underlining that there was some um, of this equipment that was uh, sent in to another place than in Canada, and we will do a, a, a we will look at this and follow up with the Premier Legault and Minister Le Garneau and the Minister responsible uh, to make sure of what what happened with them here, and also to make sure that the the equipment that is this destined to Canada gets to Canada. I've heard reports uh, on this issue, and of course they're concerning. Uh, we need to make sure that equipment that is destined for Canada. Uh, gets to and stays in Canada, and I've asked ministers to follow up uh, on uh, these particular reports. Uh, we are working uh, not just here at home, but overseas as well to ensure that the uh, equipment that Canada has ordered uh, makes its way to Canada. 
Will you or have you raised a question with the American administration? Will you get guarantees or have you already have a guarantee? We are currently working with the Americans to follow and underline this specific issue. We're working together. We understand that the needs in the United States are, are, are dire, but our needs are dire as well. And uh, liber we work together. Uh, we will work together to make sure to control the, the, uh, the expansion or the propagation of this virus. And we're working with the Americans and we will continue to work with the Americans to make sure that we have the equipment we need. Thank you. Merci. The next question, Alex Ballengal, Toronto Star, line open. Morning, uh, Prime Minister. Uh, just, you mentioned uh, getting more information uh, on the numbers and predictions soon. What, what does soon mean and what information specifically are you uh, referring to? I think, first of all, we can highlight that there has been tremendous transparency on the raw data, on the numbers, uh, on the numbers of cases, on where they are, uh, and we're, of course, adding to and collaborating closely with the provinces on making sure that those numbers get out there. The question of analysis of those numbers is the next, the next question. People want to know what the model is, how long they're likely to be in this situation, uh, when uh, kids can see their friends again, when uh, we're going to be through this phase and get back to work. Uh, those depend, those analyses depend directly on Canadians' behaviors. They depend on whether or not people follow the rules around social distancing, around staying two meters apart, around isolation isolation, about not going out uh, if for groceries more than uh, once a week if you can. These kinds of things will have a direct impact on which of the various models uh, that are out there will be the one we take. And we're going to continue to work on those analyses. We're going to continue to crunch the data and numbers. And we're going to continue to be open with Canadians about those expectations. I understand that people want to have more information. You want to know how long will we stay in this situation? When will they get back to their job? When will they see their friends, particularly for for youth? We share the data, meaning the numbers of cases, uh, many cases every day, and where they're located, so that people can see what's going on. But people are all also interested by the analysis of those data, the models that will predict how long it could last. Of course, these models depend directly of the behavior of, of citizens today, yesterday. That's why it's so important that every one of us follow the directives, self-isolate, stay home, keep their distance, minimize their contacts, with anyone in order for us to effectively get through this as, as best as possible. Just as a follow -up, you yourself a couple of days ago described some of the scenarios as fairly dire. Why, why is it that you can't release the projections that you have now, uh, the range of scenarios that you've talked about from, from you know, things working to things being fairly dire? I think people can imagine uh, a range of scenarios that shows uh, uh, everything from everyone gets suddenly better within the next uh, few weeks to uh, this situation just keeps getting worse and we face a situation like, uh, like uh, some other countries in the most dire situations have. Uh, there is a range out there and just highlighting that range is not as uh, useful or important as being able to get clearer numbers and clearer analysis of what we are likely to face. But everything that we are going to face will be directly linked to how people behave today. And that is why it is so important that people stay home, that they continue with the social distancing, continue keeping two meters apart, continue uh, to look to minimize their movements as much as possible so that we can get through this in the best shape possible. Okay. 
I understand that people can imagine all kinds of different scenarios that goes from it's not that bad to it's extremely bad, uh, as we see in other countries. Uh, what, and the important thing for us is to give realistic models, and this depends directly on the behavior that people are having today how they will continue to self-isolate, how they will keep their distance, how those behaviors that they will have in the days coming will have an impact on what the future will look like. Thank you. Merci. Prochaine question, Raymond Fillion, TVA. À vous. Mr. Prime Minister, in the, in the same line, if you had a, those famous model scenarios, do you fear the anxiety or the panic? Many people would like to have the right uh, information, and we see the difference. The Americans do give those numbers out. I think it's important to give the information out, yes, and people should be expecting what's coming, but we know at the same time that the important thing for people people is to know that their choice, their behavior today has a direct impact on what will be that model, what will be the, uh, the result of those weeks of isolation. As I said, we have weeks before us, maybe months before us. But to get this message as clear as possible and to plan for the next weeks and months, we need more analysis on how people are behaving behaving today. And uh, we are sharing data. There's some models circulating. We will have more to say in the days and the weeks coming. Your health minister said yesterday that the Federal Reserve of uh, medical equipment is not ready, not ready to face this crisis. So how come your government that has been in place for five years hasn't prepared these talks adequately? I think it's something that many governments across the world uh, will have uh, to think about this after where we were through this. And we will learn a lot of things uh, through this experience, through this crisis. And for us, the essential thing for now is to make sure that we get to deliver the necessary equipment to, for our health system, that we keep this curve as flat as possible in order to make sure that we do not face a situation where our hospitals are overburdened, that, that our health system cannot take care of people who are affected uh, seriously by COVID-19. And that's why uh, what all we're doing is protecting people today for tomorrow. Thank you. Merci. Next question, Mia Radson, the Canadian Press. Line open. Good morning. I'm wondering if you could explain to us, if you're not going to tell us what those analyses, analyses say yet, can you tell us what metrics are going into those analyses? What are the key things that you're asking to be told about that is guiding your decision making right now? What we've been working with the provinces on is ensuring that we have the best possible data. Uh, we've seen over the past days there's been a lot of clearing of the backlog in testing uh, in a number of different places that is giving us more accurate uh, images on uh, how COVID-19 is spreading, on where it's spreading, on how it's being transmitted and on how the measures that we're bringing into place uh, are working. I'll be speaking tonight with the premiers about uh, this data, about the modeling and analysis that's going on, and we look forward to being able to share more information soon. Good morning, Prime Minister. I'm also one Go ahead, I'm also wondering. I'm also wondering if um, you're, you're talking about Canadians not staying home, that some are, but there are still too many that are not. Does Canada have the ability, and would you consider using that ability, to issue a national mandatory stay-at-home order? Um, that would be part of the Emergency Measures Act uh, that could be brought in. Uh, at this point, we've been working very closely with the provinces who themselves have more measures that they have the, the ability to put in. We've seen uh, certain provinces uh, bringing in more more stiff uh, measures. 
Uh, we will continue to work with them, and the Federal Emergency Measures Act uh, really becomes necessary once provinces have exhausted all their significant powers under the Emergencies Act, and we're not quite yet at that point. Good morning, Prime Minister Olivia Stefanovic, CBC News. Other countries have been able to release detailed modeling. For example, New Zealand is projecting a 65% infection rate for its population, a 1% fatality rate, and also a 20% fatality rate for its elderly Maori people. So I'm wondering why your government can't release the modeling you have in your possession right now to help Canadians prepare and to also make sure that Canadians keep following the rules. What's stopping you from releasing this information right now? Uh, one of the things that we'll be talking about tonight with the premiers is how to make sure that all our various sources of data are aligned so that we can get more accurate models. How we make sure that the analysis that we apply to the data that's coming in that's being published daily so Canadians can see it actually makes sense and reflects what's going to happen in Canada, what's going to happen in various regions across the country, uh, which uh, will be different from what happens in other countries around the world. Uh, that is uh, sophisticated modeling work that's being worked on right now that is ongoing, and we look forward to sharing more with Canadians in the coming days. What are your government's plans for returning cruise ship passengers from Florida? How will they get home? Will they be quarantined <clears throat> or allowed to self-isolate at home? Uh, anyone who returns uh, from overseas needs to be quarantined for 14 days, needs to I be isolated uh, so that they do not uh, spread uh, COVID-19 uh, in the population. Uh, we've received many, many Canadians who've returned home over the past couple of weeks. Uh, there are still a few more to come, but far less than have already come. And uh, those people have been isolating. We've been asking people to make sure that they don't stop into the grocery store on the way home uh, from the airport that they go straight home, that they isolate, that they understand they pose a real risk, not just uh, to their neighbours and their loved ones, uh, but to our entire country. We need to ensure and we will ensure that those people are properly isolated. Respectfully, the question was about these passengers specifically from Florida. Are, how are they going to be uh, getting home and will they be quarantined more specifically or just asked to go home? Uh, my understanding is uh, they will be uh, flown home uh, on uh, a charter flight, but we, uh, we're still looking for uh, those details uh, and we will ensure that they are isolated when they get home. Uh, we understand that there's a chart, charter flight that is there. They're supposed to be there to bring them back home. And, of course, they, uh, they are in isolation when they will get back home. Minister Janet Silver, Global News. Just to go back on the modeling numbers, the data, um, why not release the numbers now if we're really trying to get Canadians to understand the difference that their behaviour makes? Given the warm weather, given people want to go outside, if we, why not release the numbers now so that they really understand just how much of an impact their behaviour will make? We have been releasing numbers. We've been releasing the data uh, regularly. We're improving the quality of the data. We're coordinating uh, with the provinces to make sure uh, that the data is consistent right across the country. And that is the numbers that we are putting through into various models. And as we get those models more accurate, we look forward to sharing them with Canadians. Just to switch gears now on China, U.S. intelligent reports reveal that China concealed the degree and the severity of the outbreak. I'm just wondering, does Canada have the similar intelligence? And in the past, we have said that we, we trust China and their information. Do we still trust China and their information? Uh, we know that countries around the world have been sharing information with each other on their cases and on uh, what has been effective in terms of measures. We've learned a lot from uh, South Korea, Singapore and other countries. We've learned, unfortunately, a lot from Italy as well in terms of what, what worked and what didn't work there. Um, we need to can keep learning from other countries, but we also need uh, to be really thoughtful about how we uh, process and, and, uh, and understand that information. Uh, obviously, there'll be many many questions uh, as this uh, is all uh, uh, all worked through over the coming months and, and indeed years on how this was handled, what lessons are taken, uh, who did well, who didn't do as well, uh, and who uh, was perhaps not as forthcoming with the global community as they should have been. Uh, those are questions, though, uh, for future times. Our focus right now is on getting through this uh, in a way that keeps Canadians whole and safe. 
We acknowledge that uh, there's much information on what different countries have did and tried, and we can look at what worked and what didn't work elsewhere in the world. Of course, in the months and in the years coming, there will be a lot of thinking and analysis on what country, which country did what, how they managed this, and some countries uh, were not. And if some countries were not honest with the rest of the world, it will be important to know it. But for now, our priority and our accent is our emphasis is on how to protect Canadians as much as possible. Mr. Molly Thomas, CTP National News. Uh, the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives released new numbers today that said over 8,000 800,000 Canadians will get no income support during this time. These are people that were unemployed or looking for work before the crisis. Uh, of course, they don't qualify for EI. They're not going to get that emergency benefit. Are you looking at anything to help these people? Uh, yes, uh, absolutely. We're looking at ways to help uh, everyone in Canada that needs it. The two measures we put forward, uh, the uh, wage subsidy through employers and the Canada Emergency Response Benefit uh, will help millions of Canadians, but we know that there are many vulnerable vulnerable people who won't be able to access this support, who will need uh, extra help. Uh, we're making uh, making sure that we're flowing funds uh, through shelters, through uh, nonprofits and charitable organizations as well. But there will always be more to do to make sure that everyone, particularly our most vulnerable, are able to keep themselves safe and keep uh, our communities safe by being able to do the right things and have the support. We acknowledge that even with the unprecedented measures that we put in place with uh, the Canadian emergency benefit and the help for salary for employers to help their employees, there are some people who won't qualify for these measures and we will continue to work particularly to help those who are most vulnerable who need support during these tough times in order to protect themselves and protect the community. That's why we will continue to think and help people to, Prime Minister, so we, can we know get that Atlantic Canada together. provinces have blocked entry of people from outside their provinces to keep people safe. Of course, Quebec now has police uh, checkpoints along the Ontario border. If you enacted the Emergency Act, obviously this could all be uniform in line across the country. So should we be locking down each province in lieu of that? I think every province is going to look at what its own needs are. Uh, the Northern Territories, for example, brought in very strong measures uh, much earlier on than anyone else because they recognized the extreme vulnerability of remote Northern populations to uh, an infectious disease like this one. Uh, every different province is looking at what measures it needs to take and the federal government will provide uh, the support uh, to all provinces that need, need our support as we move forward. Uh, yes, there is a Federal Emergencies Act uh, that we can bring in, but as I said, the moment to bring that in uh, is really when there are things that the provinces and Canadians need to see done that can't be done by the provinces. And we will continue to work very, very closely with the provinces and all jurisdictions to ensure that the tools that everyone has at different levels are used uh, as, as they need to be. Bonjour, Monsieur Trudeau, Louis Blouin, Radio-Canada. Uh, as much product, uh, medical uh, equipment and other equipment uh, are uh, scarce, so do you fear that provinces will be more protective of their material and won't be uh, sharing or wanting to share as much? Is it part of your worries and will you talk about this? with the premiers. Our objective is that once we get through these moments where we don't produce these elements in, in Canada and these necessary equipment, um, that we're at a point where Canadian production is enough for our whole country and could be enough even when we have enough to even share with other countries in the world if they need it. And it's something that we're working on uh, right now. From now till then, we make sure we want to make sure that all the regions who need the equipment will receive the equipment that they need. And we acknowledge that the needs are different in different regions and moments. And that's why we are so much, we're doing so much coordination with the provinces. Mr. Trudeau, you have uh, scratched your throat a few times today. How's your health? Any symptoms uh, that are coming up? No, no, my, my health is really good. Uh, uh, I, I'm spending one hour outside with you every morning. 
um, every, and maybe I should put a, a scarf on. Uh, my health is, is really, really good. Thank you for asking. Uh, I, yes, you noticed I may have cleared my throat a couple of times today. There is absolutely nothing to worry about. I have no symptoms of COVID. It perhaps means that I should uh, get back to wearing my scarf, even though it's nice and sunny out this morning. Uh, but thank you all for your, uh, your concern. Uh, I'm doing just fine. Merci, c'est ce qui est mieux fait à la conférence de presse aujourd'hui. Bonne journée. Merci tout le monde. Uh, question and answers from